Morning everybody, hope you're keeping safe and well. This is our first St Mark's morning prayer after Easter. And to state the obvious, it's been a different Easter from what we expected. Many things that we have planned didn't happen. There was no Good Friday walk of witness involving the churches of Hitchin. There was no messy St Mark's on Good Friday afternoon. The St Mark's flower rangers didn't meet on the Saturday to make church beautiful. There was no early morning communion followed by a tasty breakfast. Our church didn't hold what is traditionally one of the best attended services of the year. And the choir didn't sing an Easter anthem. All very sad. But Easter was celebrated. Andrew led a Good Friday meditation. Quite a few of us from different churches put crosses or pictures of crosses in our gardens or windows. On Easter Sunday morning, some watched a service from St Paul's Letchworth, led by Jenny McQuaid. Some took part in a Zoom family service, definitely a new experience. Some did both. And what happened among the people of St Mark's happened among the people of every Hitchin church and just about every church in the land. People used their imagination, their technical abilities, their strengths and their weaknesses their God-given creativity, as someone said to me, to proclaim the risen Christ. Lots of things were cancelled, but not our ability to say, shout, whisper, sing, tell our town, tell the world, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now we continue that proclamation in what is called, in the Christian calendar, the post-Easter season. And I love the way in which our Bible readings tell us what happened next. Was it an anticlimax? No. There are rather some of the most beautiful stories in Scripture of how the risen Jesus appeared to his friends, his disciples, and others who had known him during his ministry. And among those who had been particularly close to him were women, especially Mary of Magdala. She just couldn't believe that her Lord's life had ended. Others might leave the tomb, but she lingered. And this is what happened, and Helen's going to read it for us from John chapter 20, verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realise it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I've not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm returning to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I've seen the Lord! And she told them he had said these things to her. As I said, the beautiful story. It's like mystery often to me, why she didn't recognise Jesus, why she confused him with the gardener. Was it because she was crying? Was it poor light? Uh, We'll never know. What we do know is that she did recognise his voice and that voice called her name. Now we can't have the immediate intimate experience of Mary and anyway Jesus ascended shortly after this so his presence with us is now very different. But over the centuries Christians have been sure that they have known Jesus personally And they've expressed this in many ways and still do. They walk with him. They talk with him. They just know he is with them 
in the power of the Spirit. And they can honestly say that they hear his voice in prayers, in preaching, in hymns, in the consecrating of bread and wine, in silence. My prayer today is that we may hear his voice to comfort, to strengthen us, to guide us and to make us a blessing to others, especially those who have find this, this time of lockdown too much. I'm going to close with a hymn that we rarely sing these days. And the language may be a bit dated, but it's been with me since my childhood, which is a long time ago, and I still find it comforting. Um, I'm going to say it, not sing it. You'd be relieved to know. It's three verses. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down that your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one. Stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your, moon shall, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till travelling days are done. Amen.